Hi, I'm Jessica Moskowitz, and I'm here with Molly Yashimoto, an artist in Seattle that has been at the Miller Library for many years displaying her art. And she's the author of three books, Colors of the West, Birds of the West, and Birds Season by Season. And this year, our art show will be virtual and we're thrilled that Molly will be holding a virtual exhibit and during the month of November she will donate 20% of her proceeds of card and print sales to the Miller Library and Molly you can explain on your website how people can purchase prints if you like <laughs> sure I'm happy to do that. Um, I will describe it on my website, but I can also tell you right now that uh, I'm offering curbside pickup at my home in Northeast Seattle, or I can deliver it to you. Um, you know, we can discuss it if you see something that you'd like to buy. So we're also here to interview you about your process of art and how you do things. So. Let's get started. Um, what type of material do you use? Well, I started out as a watercolor artist, but uh, probably over 10 years ago, I got interested in block printing, which I really enjoy. I studied the history of woodblock prints, and I, I'm very interested in it, and decided I wanted to try it, because I felt that there were things that I wanted to express in art that I really couldn't do with watercolor alone. So um, I, I have a few materials here to show you. You know, usually all my art, both watercolors, block prints, and etchings, begin with something that I see when I'm out in my garden or out on a hike on a trip around the Northwest or the West where I've spent a lot of time. So yeah, I'll, I'll bring my camera and my sketchbook. I don't always have time for a sketch, but I'm always taking a lot of pictures. And many times I'll synthesize photos that I take on a trip to create the art. So let me just show you something I just finished. Excellent. This is a drawing that I did. Um, that looks great. Yeah, good. You can kind of see it, right? Yes. It's three oyster catchers. And my sister is a librarian in New Zealand, and she was publishing a book of some local poets. And she, if, strangely enough, they have a lot of black oyster catchers in New Zealand as well as here in Washington. So that was really fun. She sent me a photo of these three oyster catchers. I used this drawing, and here is the print. Wow. So this is going to be the cover of their book. And we thought that oyster catchers, the group of them, was kind of a neat thing for a collection, an anthology of various poets. So she had the photo, which I was trying to dig up right now, and I couldn't find it see how things progress. I have another example. Sure. I love seeing the examples. Here, here we have <clears throat> the actual block print mm -hmm. that um, was what I printed from to create the art. Here's the print without any color on it. And uh, it's just what you do is you put the piece of paper down on the block after you carve it. Wow. And you let it dry for a bit. I use an oil-based ink. And then you tint it with watercolor. And in this case, this, uh, this print became the cover of the 20. 21, I think that's where we are. <laughs> yeah, 2021. <now. laughs> My publisher, Pomegranate, works things way in advance. <laughs> so, <clears throat> believe it or not, 
they've already come up with the cover for the 2022 calendar. Wow. Uh, here, I just have the proof page. Looks great. And it's another block print. Yes. So I didn't talk to you about the tools I used to do this carving. But oh, yes. I'd like to show you this particular material that I'm using is called Safety Cut. And I have these tools from the Speedball Company. Hmm. And they're, uh, you know, some carving tools. These wouldn't really be adequate for wood block, but they work quite well on this Safety Cut material, which is kind of a soft carve material. Yeah. And, you know, I have done many wood block prints too, but probably in total, I've done maybe 80 or 90 of this material and the reason is you know because by doing calendars i have to come up with 12 images for a, a year and i've been doing this for many years so if i were to do wood blocks they would take a great deal longer right so uh, this is why i use this material plus it's a lot easier on your wrist wood wood blocks can really do some damage and, and this is much easier yeah it looks like it's spongy and has some kind of give to yeah it. it's stiff enough i mean there are some easy cart materials that i don't really recommend but this one is a good one safety huh. cut you can get it online Hmm. What's the most challenging thing about the art, like other than the carving process, or is there is it difficult to transition from watercolor, or I don't really know <laughs> as an art for a non art person. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah, I think probably the most difficult thing for beginners, and I'm talking as if I were a teacher here because I've taught That's this good. many times for uh, Daniel Smith Artist Material, a store in Seattle that I've been working with for years. I love teaching with them. And um, I think the most challenging thing is trying to imagine how you're gonna incorporate color into this black and white image. Yes, I um, agree with that. <laughs> Sometimes even now, I'm really surprised by it once I have the color. You know, I'm like, wow, I don't think, I didn't think it was going to turn out that way. So I'll be surprised, mostly pleasantly surprised, but sometimes not pleasantly surprised. Like, oh dear, you know, I don't like how that turned out. Now, then in that case, I'll probably do a couple of different prints to try different colors to see if something else doesn't work better. Hmm. Wow. And have you ever printed or, or painted from your memory alone, or is it usually from the sketchbook or for the photographs? Um, almost always from a sketchbook or a photo. I, I have a sketchbook here I can show you. Just That's a great. sec, I'll just grab it. Sometimes it's fun to just do a little sketch, you know, in advance. So here's a couple. Um, you have some scenes in the North Cascades, and this is over in uh, Leavenworth, you know, right near the Tumwater Canyon, fall color, always beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, on occasion, I will make something up. But yeah. if, if I do that, it's almost always something that I've done so many times. I mean, drawn, you know, drawn something like, say, some rocks or uh, maybe some leaves that I know what they look like. And so that's pretty easy to make up. But something like a bird, wow, they're difficult to draw. And you really have to have a good subject, a good model. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Um. Is there anything else you want to show from your workspace or? Um, yeah, let's see. Well, this is kind of interesting. Right now, I'm working on a book about Mount Rainier uh, for Mountaineers Books. They published uh, two of my books previously, as Jessica told you. And uh, so this summer and last fall and winter, I just spent lots of time at Rainier sketching, painting, uh, learning things about the park. 
and I turned in the manuscript and had a great time writing it, but there were a couple pieces of art that they wanted. And this particular one, I want to show you a photo I took. I was up um, late July at Paradise Meadows and saw some of the most spectacular wildflowers and the heather was blooming this photo i hope you can kind of see the gorgeous heather and hemlocks and subalpine firs in the background and the editors asked me if i could do um, an illustration of one of the typical meadow meadow plant communities at mount rainier and i thought this one was going to make a great sketch because the heather meadow is a really common plant community at paradise so i haven't started my sketch yet but i'm really thrilled that i took such a good photo back in july because i didn't really know they'd be wanting me to do that mm -hmm. but um, it's it's really important to me in the work that i do in my writing and painting that things are accurate and that they represent say a real plant community so then i really don't make things up and i, I have a great book on uh, plant communities of mount rainier so i research and it's really fun mm -hmm. you, you folks at the library that really know a lot about plants i think you'll understand oh yeah it's fun to see the the paintings of the plants and sometimes they're so accurate uh, what are some of the questions folks have asked you in person at shows or that you found memorable or interesting about your art or quirky? <laughs> yeah. Well, last fall, I was really gratified. I had many people come to the opening that I had and ask me about the etchings that I did. And, uh, you know, you folks who are looking at the virtual show, you'll see that there are a couple of etchings that are in, in the show. And that just really made me happy. I, I brought the plates to show them. I showed the etching tools. And I find it really fun, probably because I'm a teacher. I like people asking those questions, how did you do it? Mm -hmm. I think that's fun. And then another thing I really enjoy is when I'm talking to a real expert, a real uh, plants person. That makes me really happy that when I feel I've connected with them and that they uh, admire or, you know, in some way enjoy what I've done. Great. Well, I think uh, that's it for my questions. Um, do, I guess we can remind people again that if they go to mollyhashimoto.com and your art is published there along with blog and a bunch of other things. And Hi. And um, also there are holiday cards. This year there's a crow oh, yes. and a kingfisher. And um, do you want to hold up your? Yeah, sure. I can do that. Cards. And the trees are, I know, a favorite of. Yeah. And Everyone. people have seen those probably a lot, but here's a new card, a crow. We have many crow fanciers in That's Seattle. True. Yes. <laughs> so there's this one. And uh, kingfishers, I I go down to Magnuson Park a lot, and I see them there all the time. So this is a representation of Magnuson in the snow with the kingfishers. Oh, right. Excellent. Yeah. Um, one other thing that folks might be interested in, People with young children or grandchildren in the past have really enjoyed um, these books. And yes. so they're baby board books. Uh, Zoe Burke at Pomegranate is the author, and, and she, she and I work together, and these are my illustrations. So we have one on trees, one on birds. And the last thing we did, which has been very popular during the pandemic, is the Art and Nature Activity Book. Oh, yes. I think that. kids have enjoyed that. Uh, there are 
we're all looking for good stuff to do and this one's fun so we wrote this one too and there's a lot of funny stuff in it i like it a lot how cute i can't wait to look at that well thank so, you so much this has been well, you're great. very welcome i really look forward to when we can all meet in person again me too me too